The fourth and last part of the presentation on choosing a sire asks what the future is for goat genetic evaluations. The answer is centered on goat genomics. Up until now, genetic evaluations for goats have primarily used the performance of an animal, its ancestors and progeny to try and estimate the genes an animal has inherited, i.e. to estimate its genotype. The more performance information we have, the more reliable or accurate those estimates are going to get. However, we, today we have tools available to determine all or part of the actual genotype or genome of an animal. All of these tools hinge on DNA analysis. DNA analysis is now required for breeding bucks in most goat breed associations. Identifying, okay, assays have been developed to genotype individual goats based on identifying sites on the chromosomes where goats have different nucleic acids or polymorphisms. Um, essentially have different alleles. An example of this would be the Mendelian traits of a wrinkled um, pea, you know, skin to a pea or a round shape to a pea versus a um, smooth skin to a pea or a oval shape to a pea. Identifying these different alleles allows us to verify pedigrees and, term, and to determine some of the polymorphisms that are, result in different phenotypes for traits such as horn status, coat color, et cetera, or have a role in a serious genetic defect. We don't have to wait to estimate genes or breeding values from the appearance or performance of progeny. Instead, we can determine these influential polymorphisms or SNPs uh, which means a single nucleotide polymorphism of a buck or, do, or doe as soon as they have a DNA analysis. So basically, as soon as they have follicle hair roots um, and you can pull hair from them or get a blood sample from them or whatever. Most, US, most United States goat DNA analyses are done through the UC Davis Veterinary Gen um, Genetics Laboratory. Besides looking at enough polymorphisms to confirm that the reported ancestry of a goat is correct, the UC Davis Veterinary Genetics Lab currently offers information on three tra traits in dairy goats. One of these traits is alpha S1 casein, which is an important trait, can be an, possibly an, an important trait for cheesemakers. Of the four casein proteins in goat milk, Alpha S1 casein appears to be the most influential for cheese making. The gene controlling this casein has several polymorphisms which affect the amount of protein and fat produced when making cheese. Higher levels of alpha S1 casein are associated with higher cheese yield. However, some research also suggests that people with milk sensitivities may be more tolerant of goat milk that is low in alpha S1 casein. So depending on your purpose um, for wanting to know about alpha S1 casein, your different alleles are going to be important to you. We now have genetic assays to identify different variants or polymorphisms for alpha S1 casein. Variants E, F, and N are associated with low levels of alpha S1 casein, so possibly more tolerance to goat milk, while variants A and B are associated with higher levels and hence higher cheese yield. Inheriting a high variant from one parent and a low variant, low variant from the other parent will produce intermediate amounts of alpha S1 casein. And this type of gene action is called codominance. Another trait that the uh, UC Davis lab can test for is susceptibility to scrapie. Scrapie is a fatal infectious neurological prion disease of sheep and goats. 
Even though it is infectious, the susceptibility of, of a goat to the disease depends on what alleles or polymorphisms the goat has inherited at specific locations on the prion protein gene. Some of the polymorphisms with importance in U.S. dairy goats are N, um, which has asperogene at position 146 and confers no additional resistance to scrapie, S, which has serine, uh, serine at position 146 and does confer genetic resistance, Q, which has glutamine at position 222 and confers no additional resistance, and K, which at li has lysine at position 222 and does confer genetic resistance against classical scrapie. Therefore, a goat inheriting the NNQQ genotype will be more susceptible to scrapie than a goat that has inherited the SSKK genotype. We also have uh, figured out a lot of the polymorphisms that affect scrapie susceptibility in sheep. However, these are not necessarily at the same positions or include the same alleles as those with importance in goats. G6S deficiency is a genetic disorder of Nubian goats and of their crosses, for example, many Nubians. A common, the common signs of G6S deficiency are impaired immune system and poor growth and muscle coronation leading to early death. And these animals really rarely live beyond six months of age or so, though some of them can live to be almost four years of age. Heparin sulfate is a substance within a cell that regulates many important biological functions. However, when heparin Heparin sulfate is allowed to accumulate within a cell rather than normally degrading. It results in impaired cell function and progressive uh, degenerative or wasting disease. UC Davis has identified a polymorphism at one site that interferes with an enzyme that would normally be responsible for degrading heparin, heparin sulfate. So if an animal has does, has inherited this polymorphism um, the, from both, it has to inherit it from both parents because the action here is an autosomal re, re, um, recessive. Um, and therefore you must, it must be inherited from both parents to cause the disease. If it's only been uh, inherited from one parent, then the animal will be a carrier that shows no symptoms of G6, S deficiency, but can pass on the disease if bred to another carrier. A study of 550 Nubians from 20 herds identified about one fourth of them as being carriers. American Dairy Goat Association or ADGA offers discounted testing rates to encourage the identification of carriers, but G6S testing results are included in the goat's pedigree and permanent record only upon the breeder's request. Privacy issues are likely to limit the sharing of information on the de deleterious um, genomes in the future as well. Genomics can also be used to identify single nucleotide polymorphisms, uh, SNPs, that influence economically important traits. Um, the genetic merit for linear traits and milking performance in dairy cattle in the US now, com um, now combine genetic testing with progeny testing. Um, this results in increased accuracy of young sire evaluations and drastically shortens the generation interval before an accurate genetic evaluation or PTA, uh, predicted transmitting ability, can be produced for a bull or a cow. The rate of improvement in average um, net merit nearly doubled for Holstein bulls in 2014 compared to 2010 when gene genomic evaluation was first incorporated into your typical genetic evaluations based on on-farm performance testing. 
However, the development of economic genotype assays and reliable prediction factors in U.S. Holstein dairy cattle was dependent on linking the genotypes of 5,000 heavily used AI bulls with the perfor actual performance of their numerous progeny. So therefore, these bulls had information on their linear, linear appraisals, and they also had lots of information on the DHI records or performance of their daughters. Each informative and SN or each informative SNP site was compared to the actual progeny results to develop the prediction equations that link the polymorphisms at specific sites to actual performance. How likely are we to get enough genetic testing on economically important traits for dairy goats? Unfortunately, it's probably very unlikely because few herds are doing DHI milk testing. The situation probably is a little better for linear appraisal traits where more herds were do typically um, enroll. The value of choosing a goat sire depends in large part on the availability of accurate genotype information. And it also depends on the development of cheaper assays. Currently 50 to 60K chips that look at more than 50,000 sites are available for goats. However, in dairy cattle, they've been able to eliminate a lot of those sites that aren't, don't provide very much information, okay? And this has allowed them to develop low density sites that greatly reduce the number of SNPs genotype without sacrificing much accuracy for important traits. And this makes it economical to genotype cows as well as genotyping bulls. As an industry, we go, reducers have to decide how willing we are to share both negative and positive information on genetic defects in our goat and sheep pedigrees. Or at least we have to make sure that we're willing to cull out carrier animals. We also need to ask ourselves, how willing are we to invest in the cost of having dairy goat herds linear appraised and DHI tested in order to develop accurate prediction equations to link alleles with actual milk and or type performance. Are we willing to invest in on-farm performance testing for meat goats and for fiber meat sheep as is available through, SNI, through NSIP? The future progress of the goat industry depends on us. Questions? If you have any questions, you're welcome to contact me, Tatiana Louisa Stanton at TLS7 at cornell.edu. I always welcome questions.